Hi guys, in this video I'll demonstrate how to read space characters in C++ and then some of the issues that come up when reading in space characters. Let's start by declaring a variable of type char named C and then I prompt the user to enter a character and I read that character into the variable C. Then I output what was entered. So I output the string you entered, single quote. I output the value stored in the variable C, followed by a single quote, and then I add a line break. Now when I run this, we get the prompt. I can enter any character, such as an H, and it'll reflect you entered H. It can be another special character, such as the dollar sign or a number, for example, 8, and output 8. Now let's try to output a space. So I put in, tap the space bar, hit enter, and we can see nothing happens. Now I can hit enter again, space again, nothing happens. Until I enter some character, for example, R, hit enter, now it will show you entered R. And um, what we just witnessed is that the sin object, whenever we read in something, it ignores the space that is before. Then there's a, any non white space character. And then whenever we hit the enter key, it essentially starts reading and ignores any space that was entered. Now, part of that space could be an enter key. Like we said, when I started with a space and then I can hit enter, it's part of this white space here. So there has to be some non-space character that come up. So if I run this again, if I don't have a non-space character yet, uh, I can hit enter. It's all part of the space that is ignored here. Once I hit a non-space character, so it can really be anything, it can be, let's say, capital E, can be other non-space characters, so I just type in gibberish. Now I'm part of this sequence here, non-space characters, and when I hit enter again, then it starts triggering and reading. And what I'll do, it'll ignore the space before. The first non-space character, in this case the E, it will read in and ignore the ones the remaining ones. The remaining ones will still remain in the input buffer. So if I have another CN statement following this, it will continue reading the non-space characters here. So we, we understand now how the CN object works and how it reads it in. What we want to do is we want to read in any space. So the very first character, regardless what it is. And we can accomplish this by using sin.get and pass in c to that function. So the sin.get function reads really anything, any character that was entered. So let's run this program again. So let's type in just a character A. This works like before, but what I can do now as well, is I can tap a space, hit enter, and we see it read the space character or I can hit enter, and then we see it read the actual enter key that was entered. So now I, it really can read any key that is ever entered. There are two versions, so sometimes I, I just used sin.get, but sometimes you may also see sin.get as an assignment. Um, notice that I didn't pass anything in, it's just open close parentheses here, and here I assign whatever was entered to C. So either one of them is fine. There's not really a difference. It's just a different syntax. I can accomplish the same thing. Hit spacebar, hit enter, and I see the space was entered. So this is how we read in space characters. Now what? let's move to number two here. What, have, what are some issues that come up? One issue is that we may have a, some code before such as a variable here, I named it number, 
and I prompt the user enter a number and I read that into the number variable. Let's run this program again. And so I get the prompt here to enter a number. Let's just enter three. I hit enter and then it skipped the enter HR. It went directly to you entered and it shows the line break. So this is again, I entered three line break. What happens is it waits until I hit line break, then it starts reading any digits. In this case, it was a three. It stored three in my variable number. It stopped right there at the input buffer. So the next character that will come is the enter key. Then we have the C declared. It tries to read again with sin.get the next character and the very next character here is the enter key, the line break. So what we wanna actually do is we wanna ignore this. But let me give you one more example before I show you how to ignore it. Let's say I run this and I enter three, two, one. Now I hit enter key, what is gonna happen? It will read in the three, two, one into the number So three, two, one. So we hit enter, I read three, two, one, until it encounters the enter. So it stops, reads in 321 into the number variable, stops there, and then sin.get sin will read in the enter key. So what we really wanna do is ignore this enter key. And we can do this by writing here sin.ignore. So this will re ignore a single character. And when we enter something like 321, when we hit enter, we encounter the sin.ignore function call. It will skip this, and then the next character it will read, it will be after the enter key here. So when, we, when it encounters sin.get, we have the chance to enter a character again. So let's run this with sin.ignore. Let's say 123, I hit enter, and now it ignored the, the line break that I entered from the enter key, and I have a chance to enter something. So I can enter any character, I can enter a space and hit enter, so everything works fine. So whenever we work with sin.get, we wanna be sure that we don't read the enter key from the last input that was entered, and we, do this by ignoring it with a sin.ignore statement here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.